Hey, what's up guys? In this video, I'm going to talk to you about async await and how to use it. So async await is kind of different because it allows you to write asynchronous code in a synchronous fashion. So basically your asynchronous code will just look normal and at first you may have a hard time understanding the control flow because of the nature of the mechanism but afterwards you'll uh, use it all the time and really enjoy writing with async await. So um, I'm going to uh, talk to you about this method here. So this is a method that spawns a long running task and runs it. But unlike a typical asynchronous method the methods that you would write for async await should yield a task. So it, it would yield just a task for a method that returns void, but for a method that returns a specific type, you would use the uh, generic task. So basically this task, sorry, this method here produces a task that produces an integer. So uh, the task basically represents a method. So basically you want to run a task in the background so I call task.run and you basically return the return value of run which will be in this case a task that produces an integer and the that's just information regarding the long running task we're going to send this back to the calling code the uh, task information so we can properly wait on it okay so from what I can tell the only way you can pass in arguments into a task is to use task.run I haven't really uh, fooled around with it for too much but uh, I think the most elegant way of doing it is task.run and then use a lambda expression and that way you can use arguments for you uh, for your method I don't know if you consider this arguments for the lambda, but it is an argument for the uh, the master method here. So yeah, basically it returns the time it slept in seconds. This method here, I don't know why you would want to use this. You could use it as some sort of timer, but I don't know if that would that would really be proper. So at first, we're just going to run this in a normal fashion. So I'm going to return. I'm going to remove that and we can remove this if we want to async and just remove this for the time being so basically sleep async is going to run like a typical asynchronous method and it's going to it return immediately and go down to the next line even though the long running task is it lasts for five seconds so I'm going to sleep it and you'll see that the method returned immediately. Now we're going to use async await. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do is mark your method as async to let the compiler know that you're going to be using await, which is going to significantly change the control flow of this asynchronous method, this whole asynchronous operation. And Basically, you can't use await without async. Okay, so this is what's going to happen. Sleep async, it yields a task that produces an integer. This is information about the long running task. And we're going to use await to um, wait for that task to finish executing. And when it does, it's going to it's going to yield or produce an integer in seconds, the amount of time it uh, took to execute in this case. So it's going to wait here. The, the UI will be freed up and you can do whatever. And then once this task is complete, it's going to go down to anything under await and execute that on the UI thread. So let's run this and we're going to do sleep. We're going to wait five seconds. I can move all this around if I want to and it's going to say method returned after five seconds 
So again, we're going to find our asynchronous method, wait here, and it's not going to block the UI, but when it's done, it's going to move down to this line here and execute anything under a wait, which is kind of hard to grasp at like when you first do this because you're like, well, how does it not block the UI? But we're, this is executes after five seconds. It's just the way a wait works. It's just a, a super duper special syntax. And uh, once you get used to it, you'll really love it. So um, let's, uh, I'm going to show you where I've applied this. So just playing around and I decided to write um, asynchronous methods using async await for sockets. So you may have noticed that the current asynchronous methods, uh, so for instance, send async, they'll use callbacks and it's very hard to keep track of uh, data flow with the callbacks and it's, I find it pretty inelegant in general. So I wrote, uh, I wrote async await equivalents for all of these things. And there's not much of a trade-off really. Um, you're sacrificing I.O. completion ports uh, from what I can remember, but that's about it. It's not, if you've read about the, these things, it's not really a big deal. You're basically significantly increasing the elegance of your code, and that's kind of what counts. Um, so we can go into the coin form here. You can take a look at, uh, I'm going to go to the server and show you the receiving code. This is the receiving code here. This uh, all runs asynchronously, and this is only one method. There's no callbacks, it's just brilliant. So yeah, you're gonna find methods throughout the framework where you can apply async await, or you'll just question yourself like, why why hasn't anybody written async await for this? But yeah, like some popular classes, like the web client, they'll have uh, async await equivalents to the existing asynchronous methods and you'll really appreciate them.